everybody, this is Sherry at djsundry.blogspot.com and today we are going to do something very different for our tag. Now, um, I have an idea of what I'm doing. I don't really have a exact idea where this is going to go. So just sit down, enjoy the ride, and we're going to play and do something fun. So what I'm doing today is I'm just going to be using my manila tag. I'm not going to put any paper on it. We're going to just go with the manila. I've already distressed around the edges lightly and it's kind of messy, but that's okay. Um, and I've used pill paint and festive berries on that from distressing. On the other side of the tag, this is number six. And what I'm doing with it, I've already done the same with the tag and it's really pulled in more. I didn't want it so much on the front side and you'll see why in a minute. And then what I did is on my white piece of cardstock that I had my sentiment or my little, my phrase and stuff stamped or uh, printed on, I used the antique linen to kind of mess that up a bit because it was too white against the manila. And then again, I went around it with the festive berries and the pilled paint. We're using more traditional colors today. And so this is the part where I'm not sure where we're gonna end up. We're just gonna play with it and go with what we like. And if I don't like it, we'll scratch it and start over. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating my own background with this. It's going to be subtle. Um, it's not, nothing um, is really going to jump out and say, oh, that's what that is. It's just going to be a simple, subtle background. So what I've done is I have my Joyful Song stamp set from Tim Holtz, and I'm going to be using some of those stamps. I've already put the first stamp on my stamp press, and this is just a crackled image that I kind of want to come through. And I think we're going to start with um, the pumice stone distress ink, and let me just ink up my um, stamp really well and if I miss some of it that's okay because it's really not a big deal because it's kind of this is just kind of laying the background and I'm just going to stamp it over my tag now I could do second generation stamping if I wanted to I'm not going to this time um, I'm just going to do the first generation stamping um, and um, if you don't know what second generation stamping is um, a second generation stamp is just where you go the second time and do um, the, uh, you stamp your image and then the second time around you would re-stamp the image before re-inking your stamp. But today um, I'm going to just use first generation stamping for now. Now, now that I just said all that, I may come over here and do a second generation stamp um, and actually it's still inking pretty well. I may just come down here and do a third generation stamp. Yeah, just like that. And then this one, I'm going not going to ink up too much. I'm just going to do ink it up a little bit so that I have ink there, but it's more looks more like a second generation. So there we have our first stamp. And we've created a background. We've already changed the look of our tag completely just by making our own background. Now, um, the next image that I think I'm going to use is, um, I think I'm going to use my music notes because I love music. I love music at Christmas time. And I think this time I'm going to go darker. I want my notes to be a little bit darker. And so I'm going to use the Vintage Photo Distress Ink and I'm going to ink up that stamp really well. Now remember, I'm using my craft mat to stamp off in case, because it's too wide. If you don't have a craft mat, um, you might want, if you're doing something like this, you definitely are going to want to put some scratch paper underneath because you don't want your um, work surface to get all inked because if you see here, I'm going off my pad all over the place. So I'm going to put that there and my initial thought was to put it across the top too, but I think I'm not going to. I think we're just going to set that aside and call that good. And we'll clean again. I'm going to clean those off in a little bit. And then the last image I'm going to use, I think I may change my mind, is this um, angel. And I think we're going to come down from the top up here and then we'll nestle our number six down below. And for this one, I'm going to use frayed burlap. 
Now, if you've not used Distress inks before, water really, they, they react really well to water. In fact, on another tag, we're going to use a Distress ink technique using water. So if you wanted to, you could spray this. And in fact, I may very well spray this to just create some interest. So we've got our angel, I think pretty much got her inked up. I think my frayed burlap's starting to get a little bit dry. I may need to invest in a re-inker here, but there we go. So um, we're going to put her right up here. And again, she's going off the tag a little bit, and I'm good with that. I don't mind at all. So see, we've, we've created a whole background scene just with simple um, stamping. And uh, because we've put some different colors and techniques in there, it's still very pretty. If I wanted to, I could hit it with some embossing powder. I'm not going to, but I could. Instead, what I'm going to do is hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've cleared away some of my stuff because what I'm about to do is going to make a bit of a mess. I have my homemade Perfect Pearls um, powder. Sorry, I thought I had it all mixed up while I was gone. Um, and all I've done with this is this is just plain old water and I've added Perfect Pearls um, color, Perfect Pearls in here and it just makes this shimmery. You can almost see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see how it's kind of a pearlized shimmer in here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to spritz very gently. I'm going to spritz my tag with that. And what that's going to do is it's, first of all, it's going to activate all of that distress ink. And I don't know if you can see it, but in front of me, I see this, um, those greens and blues have just started pulling in a little bit and just, um, they're, they've just softened. And then there's a little tiny bit of a sparkle to it. Now, because I'm in a hurry, my next step is going to be to get my heat tool and to dry that so that we can finish up our tag. So I'm just going to use that and dry it. Okay, so it's all dry, and I will admit, I turned off the camera so you didn't have to put up with that while it was drying, and I'm just going to clean off my mat here, and actually I'm going to set it aside because it's drying, and now we have our tag that's all shimmery, all of that ink, or most of the ink has softened, and now we're going to put our, and it's a little bit wrinkly, if I wanted to, if I was worried about it, which I'm not, I could set it underneath a book. But since I'm not worried about it, we're just going to just kind of stretch it out. And now we're going to add our number here. That's the only printed paper I used in this. And honestly, if, if it wasn't already adhered, I probably would have um, done something different. Either made another background piece for myself or maybe just put the black number on there. Um, that would have been pretty as well. So I want to hold that for a minute just in case there's still a little bit of moisture in my tag. And then we've got the angel coming down over that six. And then the ribbon that I've chosen is from Holiday Traditions from Michael's. I'm, I'm sorry, from Joann's. Not dry enough I can use. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. And it's just a very, it's an ivory that has gold um, and it says Merry Christmas. And we're just going to tie a simple bow into our ribbon and day six is just about done remember you don't have to have a ton of fancy stuff to make a nice gift or a nice make something a little bit more special so there we have it our, our new tag so thanks for watching and remember to take some time to enjoy the little things